Anatomy of a Soldier is a novel about a young soldier called Tom Barnes and it starts with him lying face down in the, in the dust having been injured in a conflict and it sort of unfolds from there and tells the story of his recovery but all his, also his time fighting um, in this war and then uh, also it tells the story of the insurgents that injure him. I suppose what's interesting about it is that it's, uh, it's told from the point of view of inanimate objects. So the objects that these people carry and interact with tell the story um, through, through, so through the eyes of objects. And it's been fantastically well reviewed. You've got really famous names lining up to say how good this book is, haven't you? Go on, reel a few off. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I've been very lucky with, with some great quote, quotes from Hilary Mantel and Alan Bennett and, and, a, and a few others, which is amazing and sort of, you sort of can't quite believe it. Um, so that's really nice. So I'm slightly confused whether it's a thriller or not. I mean, should I care? Is it a thriller? Does it matter if it is or it isn't? Well, I mean, hopefully some of it's th thrilling, but uh, I didn't write it as a thriller. I just tried to write a really good book. Um, I think sometimes those questions of genre and what a book is is sometimes more to do with marketing than to do with what the author intended. OK, well, is it political? It seems not to be, deliberately. Well, it's, the book never mentions what the conflict is. Um, so in that sense, it's not directly questioning Afghanistan or Iraq, but in another sense, it is a conflict that has a lot of similarities to those places. It's about insurgency. So there are very strong messages in it about how difficult those types of conflict are and how people are injured in them. So in that sense, it is political, like any book is. You lost both legs in Afghanistan as a soldier. So the minute you know that, it's not too much of a leap to know that it is about Afghanistan. You also fought in Iraq. How do soldiers feel, in your estimation, about the rights and wrongs of those wars? I think every soldier has their own take on it. I still think about whether they were right or wrong a lot. And I know we've had inquiries about Iraq recently. Um, and it's very sad when you hear that there were mistakes made. Um, but I also think that we're very quick to forget the context in which those, com those decisions were made. And if we take ourselves back to those times, and even if I put myself in the shoes of some of the people who were making those decisions, I always ask myself, would I have made a different decision? I'm not apologising for those decisions. They should never have been made. But um, I think sometimes we need to put ourselves in, those, in the context m more imaginatively than we do. I mean, I, uh, the question I'm hesitating to ask you, but OK, I'm going to ask it anyway, is are you not incredibly bitter, having lost both legs for a war which may or may not have been right? Well, I, I, I lost my legs in Afghanistan um, and that conflict, the, and I can, I can trot off a party line here. You know, I can say we were invited in, it was UN back. Um, yeah, but I want to know how you feel about it. How I feel? Well, I feel that I joined the army to be a soldier. And as a soldier in the army, you can be sent anywhere by the government and the government is elected in by the people. And that sounds like a very sort of academic and theoretical argument, but really that's what you do as a soldier. So when you wake up in a bed in hospital and think, bugger, I've lost my legs, um, you also know that you join the army and you take that risk. So I don't feel bitter about it because that would be a waste of my energy. We've just come out of the session in which you've been talking about it with Charles Cummings and Peter Hannington, two other writers. It was you who mentioned the word brainwashing, that the army brainwashed people. Well, I, I mean, I suppose I was using that as a way of illustrating how amazing the training is to get a group of people around an idea and then they can go and do in a really dangerous things together and be brave. And I'm a strong believer that bravery and, and um, sort of unit cohesion comes from really good training. My use of the word brainwashing was to try and play on the fact that that's how we look at the enemy you know that they've been brainwashed yet they do things that we see as being unbelievable and, and we can't understand and sometimes I think we need to need to understand that better why these people go and do things that we can't understand. So what do you want us to take away from the book? Um, hopefully it's an it's a I would enjoyable is not not the right word for it but hopefully it's a read that opens people's eyes to something that they may not have understood or considered before and I suppose that's what I want people to take from it most and hopefully it's an exciting read as well.